Earlier this year, Samsung really fired the first salvo with the Android flagship series, the Samsung Galaxy S21. In that in particular, you would be looking at the Galaxy S21 Plus and the Galaxy S21 Ultra as really the torch bearers for the flagship tag. However, here we are and OnePlus have, as expected, given a rather interesting reply. What we have here is the OnePlus 9 Pro. This is part of the new OnePlus 9 series that also includes the OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9R, a phone specifically made for markets like India. Now let me just give you a bit of a background on where the OnePlus 9 Pro actually comes from and what it competes against. The thing is, last year there was no OnePlus 8T Pro, there was just OnePlus 8T. However, before that we had the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. So the OnePlus 9 Pro actually is competing on two fronts, the OnePlus 8T which is logically the predecessor as well as the OnePlus 8 Pro which is now a bit more than a year older. So where does this new phone really stand in comparison? There are significant improvements under the hood. This is the most expensive phone OnePlus has ever made. And well, to be very honest, if you're spending that sort of money, what you will get for it is absolute worth. Let me start off with the design first. It is slimmer and it is lighter than the OnePlus 8 Pro. Decidedly so, it feels much better in the hand as well. However, those little things that have really made OnePlus phones stand out over a period of time still remain. For instance, it looks very, very familiar no matter which way you look at it, even though this is a very refreshed design. Then there is this mode slider. It still remains, you can quickly switch between normal ring, vibration and silent modes without having to unlock the screen. As far as the new Hasselblad branding is concerned, it's very very visible on the camera module at the back. Again, this is one of those things that really will make your phone stand out as you hold it up against your ear. In terms of the performance, this runs absolutely the latest and the greatest Qualcomm Snapdragon chip, the 888. As well as you have the option of 8GB of RAM and 12GB of RAM, either which one of those you pick, you will get fantastic performance. It's not just the hardware plus the UFS 3.1 fast storage, it's also the improvements to the Oxygen OS over a period of time. We've seen it over the last few years how Oxygen OS has evolved. Now with the Android 11 iteration, it's even better. For instance, there's the RAM optimization feature that basically gives you more headroom in case you're leaving a lot of apps open in the background. All in all, during my usage, this phone did not exhibit any signs of stutter, of struggle or of slowdown. Forget any performance issues at all. In terms of battery life, this is quite similar to what we saw in the OnePlus 8 Pro. It's a little better, so you get less battery anxiety. But then again, with the new phone, I will admit here, there is that tendency of overusing it initially, so my observations will be a little skewed in that regard, but what you will get is definitely better battery life than any of the OnePlus phones you have used till now. Cameras are the big upgrade. The Hasselblad partnership really should be taking the OnePlus phones that couple of steps forward in the photography space. And they need to, to be honest, because their biggest rivals, Samsung, really have up the game with the Galaxy S21's cameras. What this does, it's a case of two halves and two very distinct halves. First, what you have is the absolutely brilliant daytime photography and good light photography. Brilliant detailing, colors are more accurate than I've ever seen on a OnePlus phone. Dynamic range is absolutely fantastic and this does zoom as well as ultra wide shots really well. Even the different shades of green on a tree really stand out very, very nicely in the photo. However, low light photos still need some work. Color is not actually as good as it should be. The darker areas of the photos remain a tad too dark and that leads to a little bit of uh, loss in detailing. In terms of the overall package, what the OnePlus 9 Pro really brings to the table is a lot of positives, a lot of upgrades and a lot of exciting stuff that you will enjoy using. The improvements to Oxygen OS really mean that the entire software that you're interfacing with is going to be smoother. There's so much power under the hood, you don't need to worry about apps and games at all. The display is 
very very good it's actually a very interesting piece of technology so what oneplus have done here is while this is a 120 hertz refresh rate display that basically means you can set it to go to max 120 hertz refresh rate in case you're viewing a photo for example or reading something on a web page it will clock down seamlessly to one hertz refresh rate to save on battery life there are more brightness adjustment points as well with this display so the brightness transitions, the auto brightness transitions are much more seamless. Compared to the previous OnePlus phones, this one is a lot smoother when it's shifting the brightness higher or lower depending on the ambient light. I did not notice any startling moves or any judders in terms of how the screen illumination is being altered. The thing is, till now you really didn't have much choice if you're looking for a premium Android flagship phone. You had the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Samsung Galaxy S21 and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus, pretty much the same family. Apart from that, your choices were very limited. Now, however, you have the OnePlus 9 Pro. With all its new design and avatars, three color options as well to choose from, and you suddenly have a very, very viable alternative. In fact, I would go ahead and really claim here that the best Android phone you can buy right now is perhaps made by OnePlus and not by Samsung. Which basically means we are in for interesting times again because Samsung will surely respond. But how soon and by how much is something I'm really keen to know.